This is Donna with More Than A Review, and I'm so excited to be here with Katie. Um, you guys, if you've been following me, you know I have been a fan of her since Warning Signs, which I didn't even know at the time was her first book, um, other than Virtual Reality. I think that one I still haven't read, yeah. But um, I've read all her books, I absolutely love them. And I just, we are um, at a conference we met earlier in 2019, and picked another conference to go to. <laughs> so I'm thrilled to be here with her. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, what she does and her writing and then we're also going to let her tell us a little bit about herself so can you kind of open it up and tell us a little bit about yourself okay I'm uh, I live in Connecticut in England and I have been writing since 2010 I was um, a teacher a special education teacher and and stay within the school system even though I have homeschooled my children the last 18 years and I am officially now done. <laughs> so I'm hoping more books in the future. Yeah. Um, but I still have stayed within the schools and I'm presently looking um, at a position for ESL, English as a Second Language, as well as my writing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about your writing. So let's okay. talk about High Speed Holiday. High Speed Holiday is the third in the Roads to Danger series. The first one was Silent Night Pursuit, and it's, it focuses around a family who owns a racetrack in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Uh, the parents were killed in a fiery crash, and as well as the baby of the family went missing. And this is the third book, I guess it's a spoiler, but <laughs> the third baby did not die. <laughs> and he's come back to claim his rightful place and wants a piece of the action. Very good, yeah. very good. And so tell us about, this is the one coming out. This is Amish Country Undercover. It releases February 1st. It is uh, obviously an Amish suspense. The FBI hero, he originally was Amish in the Colorado community, got involved in a crime. Even though he was innocent, he found himself amidst the crime. Uh, obviously he was FBI, he was innocent. Um, <laughs> And, but he, because of that, he did leave his community mm -hmm. after that and uh, um, has now come to arrest Grace, mm -hmm. uh, who is being framed for a horse theft ring crime off the Ken uh, Kentucky racetrack. Oh, very good. Which we have the horse in there. So yeah, I, I, I was so track. excited to have a horse on the cover. So tell us, like, you go from, um, you know, two totally different kind of genres. Like, how is it to kind of switch, and do you have to do research? Oh, for yes. Each one? Lots of research. I was asked to write the Amish stories, and I had I'd never written an Amish story before and didn't know any Amish people. So I actually found a woman on Twitter tweeted out a message. Uh, about her, the Amish people in her town, mm -hmm. and I sent her an instant message privately. You don't know me, and I'm not crazy, <laughs> but could you introduce me to some Amish people? And wow. um, she was wonderful. I actually drove all the way out nine hours to meet her uh, Ohio border, and she took me into their homes, and wow. and I was able to um, meet them. In fact, the first person that she took me to was a woman, and and. They they don't talk about pregnancy. So she said, okay, don't mention, she's pregnant, but don't mention anything about it. Oh, wow. So I went in like with my head up, <laughs> okay, not looking down. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. Yeah. And her first words were, I love your books. Oh. And totally threw me off. Like, what do you mean? Oh. Amish read suspense? <laughs> She's like, oh yes, we love them. Aww. So I said, do you read the Amish books? And she said, no, we laugh at those. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. So wow. she won't be reading this one. She may have read <laughs> this one, but she won't be reading that one. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. So did you have to do any research for the High Speed Holiday, that series? Yes, that was a lot of race cars for that one. Um, um, I drove in a race car, which I, I, I an experience like I did not expect, wow. expect at all. They, um, it's very hot, and Ooh. when you're they're taking you around those curves, and you're like going 140 miles an hour, and your head feels like it's about to explode, and and all you can do is just sit there because you can't even move because yeah. <laughs> you're like stuck there with the with the, just the force of it all, yeah. and the heat coming off the engine, you know, you're just drenched. <laughs> um, but then my favorite part was I got to drive a Ferrari. Oh. Right behind the wheel and <laughs> drove the Ferrari around the track. <laughs> like, they asked me if I wanted to, I'm like, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. Wow. So that was fun. And then my other series, I did a diving, scuba diving. Um, I uh, Sitting at the bottom, looking up and saying, wow, okay, if I stop breathing, I could literally die because there's no way I'm getting up there <laughs> on my own. But I had to be able to know what it felt like. For my, my character is going to be thrown off this boat 
and she's gonna know what to have to figure this out in the water because she's not a diver, but she's gonna have to figure it out, otherwise she won't make it. So I had to know what that felt like, that feeling of looking up and, and knowing that there's a lot of water between you and that surface and, wow. and doing this right, the right way is the only thing that's going to keep me alive. So i got to figure out what that right way is, and that's why you have to do it. Right. Although I draw the line at skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> I am not jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> no. Yep, I'm with you on there. I draw the line there too myself. <laughs> Um, so tell us, what is the best money you feel like you've spent as a writer? So obviously research is a, my favorite thing, which is funny because when I first started writing, I hated it. I'm like, this feels like homework. But then once I started getting into it and doing these great things that I would never would have done and yeah. step out of my comfort zone and, and, and tried if it wasn't because I had a book to get ready for. Yeah. So it's pushed me to do that. So right now I am um, writing a, an international thriller series that takes place within Israel, Jordan, and Egypt. And so I got to go to Israel and Jordan this summer, and I would say that's probably the, you know, my best money that I'm gonna have yeah. to spend, um, was, uh, was going there and just being immersed in this whole totally different lifestyle that I would not have been able to even read about to get that feeling yeah. of the tensions between different groups oh, yeah. and um, the climate and the um, the sounds, you know, the things going happening all around me during the day and even at 5 a.m. There's these, these certain sounds and the smell, the foods. That I couldn't even. What is that? What is that smell that is just in the air? And it's like their food is, you know, it permeates out and. I can't figure out what that spice is, that Jerusalem spice. <laughs> it's just like everywhere and trying to figure that out and, and um, yeah, put, a, put, a, put a name to it to try to <laughs> explain it in the story, you yeah. know, so stuff like that. But yeah, I would say that's the best wow. money spent. Very good, yeah. very good. So do the characters in your books um, hijack your story? No. <laughs> I'm a control freak. <laughs> So they don't get to do that. I, I plot um, every detail before I ever write a word. So every chapter is already plotted out, um, every scene, the purpose of every scene, the conflict in every scene, because oh, yeah. every character coming on that scene has an agenda. Mm -hmm. And you have to, so you have to know your characters before you write that and what each of them want out of the story. Yeah. And so every dialogue, every word spoken, um, Everything, the action they do is, is coming from their personal agendas. Yeah. So yeah, I, I go through my stories, plot them out, yeah. so I know these characters by the end. And well, you know, and I think that may be one of the things that set your smaller books apart, is everything does matter. You know, you don't have room for any filler no. there, and you can tell that. Yes, yeah. every word matters, and if it doesn't, it's gone. <laughs> I only have a certain amount of words, word count that I can use, and. Yeah, they have they have to earn their way there. That makes sense. Yeah. That that makes sense now thinking about your books versus some others that I've read. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was gonna ask. So, what do you think is the um, the the most fun or the most exciting thing about being an author? I like well, you know, I like the plotting part. The writing part. Is hard. <laughs> to be honest, it's like you're a writer, but writing is hard. But then editing, oh. editing part part. And now you get you take your your work and you you can now make it pretty. You yeah. know, and that's probably like the best part of the whole writing oh, yeah. portion for me is that editing part yeah. um, to bring it to where it's almost like a work of art. Yeah. At that point, you know, taking it the next step. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. A lot of people hate editing. That's so <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> Um, so if somebody new to your writing, because you've written several books, what book would you recommend to somebody new to your writing? Well, I mean, obviously I, I want them, I'm, I started a series, I, I want to start on the first book. So if someone's new to my writing, I will point them to Warning Signs, which is the first store, uh, book in the Stepping Stones series. Mm -hmm. And there are four books in that series. So it's, I mean, you could start at any one of them and it's mm -hmm. fine. But if you really want to understand yeah. the place, in the characters that live on this island, then yes, yeah, so I would point them to warning signs. And of course, if you like Amish, um, Amish suspense, this one here stands alone, so I can point them to this one too. So yeah. 
Yes, and it, it, and I when I say Amish, I don't know people who but they they think oh I don't want to read an Amish book. They're people, yeah. and that's something I did learn meeting them. They're people like everybody else, uh, and and yeah. So I hope that comes through in the stories as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So I always, always like to end on something fun. So what would people be surprised to know about you? Um, I uh, I guess I'm like a fear maybe or anything like oh. that so I, I'm afraid of swings Swi oh, <laughs> oh swings <laughs> yeah okay. yeah that's I, interesting yeah, yeah. I, I don't like if I go on them I'll go you know by myself but as soon as someone else comes and sits next oh. to me I get up <laughs> I'm off there but like those swing rides you see at amusement parks oh yeah no, that's not no 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 <laughs> yeah, I got you not for Vanilla looking at exactly that. exactly <laughs> yeah so yeah, my fear is swings, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank for you being for having here. me. We'll have um, links to the books, and if you're on More Than Review, I have reviewed all of them, so you're more than welcome to go Thank on there you. and check them out. Thank you. So, and I would personally have recommended Warning Signs, one of my most favorite characters. Which you know what takes me, Katie. Let's add one more thing I wanted people to know is I think you use your teaching background a lot of yes. times in the books and you kind of give some more depth to your character. So yes. let's talk about that just real quick. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm my, my special education background. I, in my books, I generally have a character who has some sort of disability. And um, so this one here, he's dyslexic. Uh, for warning signs, she's deaf. And my whole point in that is, I, and I think people talk about their themes of their books, my theme is I want people to show me what they can do before I assume they can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I hope to portray in all my stories, is, yeah. is showing these people, they're people, yeah. before anything else. Yeah. Their, their disability doesn't define them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a personality, they're, they have aspirations like everybody else, and mm -hmm. likes and dislikes and all that. So I want to introduce readers to people yeah. and then show them how they live their life, yeah. different tools they use, and how you know those things they can overcome um, to 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 have a, a fulfilled life. Yeah. Well, and you've done it with your your main characters, your heroes and your heroines. Like, yes. Uh, Muriel, like she is a very strong female character, even though she's deaf. I mean, that's I think when I read that book, I was fascinated that you can have a disability and still be the strong female character and lead it. You yeah. know, it was yes. it was fabulous. Thank so. you. Um, all right, thank you guys. Thank you.